Hi, everyone. Greg McMillan here from the iPhonography podcast. Mike James has invited me to make a contribution to the 30 Days of Lightroom Mobile. So I'm going to show you to do a quick photo edit from this one to this version. So let's get right into it. So here's the image that we're working with. And the first thing I'm going to do is zoom in on the trunk of the tree. Uh, as you can see, it looks very dark and there's not much detail there. But in the light panel, I'm going to take the blacks and go to the plus side and settle in at around 70. Now you can see that some of that uh, detail has come out of the shadow areas and uh, other adjustments will darken them back down again, but this will prevent them from losing detail later in that process. So if I press and hold that, you can see the, uh, the difference. It's quite a, quite a big difference in, in bringing out that detail in the shadow. So the next thing I'm going to do is go to contrast and I'm gonna decrease that as well, right to about there. And it's uh, bringing even more detail out of the darker areas of the image. Okay, so I'll zoom back out. So next we go into the effects panel. And the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to adjust the clarity and I'm gonna bring it up. And while I do that, watch the histogram at the top of the image. As I slide that up, the histogram uh, shows that we're actually increasing the dynamic range. And I'll settle that at around 50, 51, around there somewhere. Now press and hold and see the difference. And then the next thing I'm going to do is add texture. And this adds definition to the image. I'm going to take that to about 30. So definition, uh, it, it adds texture or definition to the image, which is similar to uh, in, in the Photos app, the native Photos app, um, uh, the editing suite in the iPhone, it has a definition slider and it basically does the same thing. It just kind of gives it a little more, uh, more texture to you know, the contrast areas of the image. So next I'm gonna to go to the color panel. And the first thing I'm going to do is increase the saturation uh, and then the vibrance. And there's a couple of things to watch here. One is to watch the snow in the background uh, on the other side of the river. And it, you'll notice that it's gonna show more blue. It's gonna to turn to a blue hue. And in the histogram, you see the blue channel there. It's close to the middle of the histogram. It's actually going to increase in width or size, which is gonna give it more dynamic range. And it's also gonna um, show that the blue is getting brighter in some parts of the image. So I'll start off with the saturation. I'll take it up to around 40 or so. And then the vibrance, I'll take it up to about 25. Now I'm doing these adjustments for the sake of the leaves to try to get them to show a little better. So now to deal with that blue, I'm going to scroll back down and up in the corner here of the color panel, you'll see a, a mix button. So this is a color mix. So the first thing I'm gonna do is blue, it's already selected. And I'm going to increase the luminance and it's going to tone down the blueness of that snow in the background. I'll take this up probably to about 30 or so. And it's going to um, not only help with the snow in the background, but the, the pine needles won't look as blue. So if I was to take that down, you can't really see it too much in the pine needles, but the purpose of this was really to deal with that blue color in the snow in the background to make it look a little more natural again. So now I wanna bring out the, the greens in the tree. So I'll go to the green channel and I'm going to make some pretty extreme moves here. Uh, it won't have a profound effect on the rest of the image, but just the pine needles, that's, that's, that's what I want to adjust here. So I'm going to zoom in on these branches 
and then we'll see what happens with these green pine needles. So the saturation, I'm gonna take it right out to about 80. And you can see there's a subtle change there, but I'm also gonna take the luminance up to 80 as well. And the green areas that are lit by the sun, they'll actually be brighter. And in the end of it, in the in the end of the uh, process, they will look a little better than they did at the beginning. So that's all the adjustments I'm going to make in the color mix panel. So I'll hit done, and then I'll go back to the light panel again. And because we took so much contrast out of the image before, although we added a little bit back in with the definition or the texture slider uh, by adding definition to the image. Uh, I'm going to take this contrast slider and I'm just going to put it back to zero. And the quickest way to do that is just double tap it and it jumps right back to zero. We can get away with this now because with the prior adjustments made to clarity and texture, they help retain the details of the darker areas of the photo. Why not do this adjustment before we did the color? Well, with the contrast backed off, we can actually see um, more color detail because the darker parts of the image weren't too dark. Uh, we were able to see how the color adjustments affect the shadow areas of the pine needles. And now with the contrast back in, the sunlit areas of the tree have more pop to them. And that's, that was the goal of, of this whole edit to begin with really is to make that part of the image pop. So now uh, we'll go over to the detail panel and this is where all the sharpening is done. And there's four different parts to sharpening the image. Um, this is always the, the last thing I do just before I, I finish the image with a slight vignette. And um, I don't put a vignette in every image, but in this one we're going to, and we'll get to that shortly here. Um, so the sharpening slider, it enhances the detail throughout the whole image. Um, you want to be careful with this, that you don't go too far. Uh, since the, the focus of this photo was set to the branches in the sunlight, uh, if you look down by the trunk, there's a, a twig sticking out of the snow, and that happened to be in about the same focal plane. So we're going to kind of use that as a, a gauge for our sharpening. So I'll zoom in on the twig, and there it is. And I'll show you what happens if I take the sharpening slider, and remember this sharpens everything in the image, and I'll take it right up to the top just so you can see what happens to it. So the twigs, the twig looks a little over sharpened, and you can even see the, the you know, the artifacts, and if that, that's probably noise in the, in the snow, it really gets enhanced by this as well. So we're gonna back this back down, and we're gonna probably stop it around 70 or so right around there. So it's just very subtle sharpening. And I keep it subtle just because that's a small part of a bigger frame, a bigger image. And you don't really need to over sharpen because if you over sharpen, then you're, you're, you're in trouble with the image and you get artifacts and everything else. So the radius slider, it controls how wide the edge is where the sharpening is applied since sharpening is done to the edges of a photo. Lower radius values offer finer edges, which is better for more detailed areas. So back in on the twig here again, uh, I'll adjust this radius. You know, if I go way, to, way up high, you can see that it, it starts to give what, what I call a haloing effect around the, around the edges of the twig. So I'll take this back down and I'm just gonna set it at, a, at one. There we go. And again, when you zoom back out, you can see that it really, it's not as noticeable as you might think, but it just helps with um, how much sharpening is done to, to the edges, like whether it's a wider edge that gets sharpened or a narrower edge and how it looks. The detail slider affects the amount of sharpening in the areas of finer detail. The higher you go with the slider, the more the smaller details get sharpened. So I'll show you what happens when I take the detail slider and I go all the way up. 
And again, we're getting into what we had there earlier with all the fine little wee details getting sharpened, which is pretty much everything, like even the texture in the snow. So we're going to back this back down. And we're even going to go as low as about 10. Because we just don't want this thing to be over sharpened. And by keeping the detail slider up, way too many of the finer details get over sharpened in my opinion. Now masking determines the elements of the image that are sharpened. When it's at zero, the whole image gets sharpened. As you go up the scale, the areas with stronger detail will get sharpened while the areas of less detail won't. If you slide it too far up the scale, the image will start to look soft and maybe even blotchy. So if I was to do that, uh, say, well, let's, let's, let's go back to the twig. And if I took the masking all the way up, you can see how it softens it. So it's actually counterintuitive. Uh, it, it doesn't really do any sharpening at all. So taking this back down, I think I, I like where it is at, when it's right at zero. So I'll leave it at zero. So now I'm going to go back to the effects panel again. Uh, I often finish and edit by adding a vignette for a little artistic flair. You don't want to go too far with a vignette. You don't want a border. You just want to add a little mood to the photo to draw the viewer to the focal point of the image. In this case, it's the part of the tree that's lit by the sun. So I'll scroll down to where it says vignette and I will take that down to about 24. And the feather, uh, I'm going to increase the feathering to make it uh, a little more subtle so that it just expands out to the corners a little more. And I'll take that to around 80 or so. And now before, there's the image as it was taken. And then after, with all the adjustments done to it, including the vignette. And I think it just adds a little bit of a, like I said, an artistic flair to the photo. And it, it, it uh, um, makes you focus more on, on the, the, the branches where it's lit by the sun. Whereas if it's not, uh, where if you don't have these edits done and you take a look at it, your, your eyes are kind of going all over the photo. But when you put that vignette on there with these edits that I've done, it, your eyes just get drawn to those branches and that's the whole point of it. So now I think I'm finished with that. I will just export it, export the camera roll. And that's it. So that's my edit of a photo for the 30 days of Lightroom Mobile. I want to say thanks again to Mike James for inviting me to make this video and contributing to the cause. And uh, the purpose of the edit was to take a what I consider to be a kind of a normal photo of a tree lit by the sun. And I wanted to enhance the color, the, the detail, the, um, the, the contrast, uh, make it more saturated, but while watching out for other elements of the frame. Uh, like the blue, blue cast in the snow on the other side of the river. And I want to just add a little vignette for artistic flair, but also to point the viewer's eye to the centerpiece of the photo, which was the, the, the pine needles lit by the sun. Uh, again, my name is Greg McMillan. Uh, I'm a host of the iPhoneography podcast, and it's uh, at the iPhoneography podcast network on YouTube. And you can find uh, more of my photos on Instagram, my name is McMillan Photo on there, and uh, thanks for watching. Take care.